Watch this. Well, we made it to Santorini. Hello from Sarajevo. Morning from Mostar. Not a highlight. Raining pretty hard. Day number two in Dubrovnik. All right, good morning from the lovely country of Switzerland. Good morning from the literal foothills of the Alps. Good morning from Strasbourg. Today is tour day. Um, we've been looking forward to this one. We're in Stockholm. Um, and today we're touring the Royal Palace and I think also the Viking Museum. So we're really, really looking forward to it because both of those are supposed to be awesome. Um, we have a guided tour of the, um, the palace, which we usually don't do. Um, so we'll do my best to recreate and kind of walk through if pictures are allowed inside. Um, but something else is exciting today. Is Jelly, what's coming today? Snow. Yeah. We're gonna get supposedly like 10 to 20 centimeters of snow today. Um, well, hopefully we can fly tomorrow. Yeah. Um, big thing is coming tomorrow, uh, going to Italy. Uh, so stay tuned for a special guest in that video. Um, but yeah, we're heading to the tour right now. It's like 10 o'clock in the morning. I think our tour is at 1030. Um, so we're going to go ahead and kick this off. It's going to be a good day. We made it inside uh, the Royal Palace. Um, so I think there's three things here. There's the state apartments, which is like the royal family. There's the guest apartments, which are upstairs. And then there's the treasury. Um, so our ticket covers all three, um, but unlike or similar, I guess, to all royal palaces, they have giant rooms and all the walls are covered in marble, which means everything echoes. Um, so we'll do our best inside to, to get some explanations. But I mean, so far, if you look around, it's pretty beautiful already. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's first glance, it is stunning. Yeah, so we got a little bit of time until our tour, but then we're going to kick it off. We're gonna do this inside this time because it's snowing and very cold outside. Um, but we just finished our tour of most of the apartments. Um, we started off because we got here a little early um, for our tour by going upstairs to what's called the guest apartments. Um, and those are actually offered to um, guests, royal guests, presidents, um, people of, of state, whenever they come to the palace to visit, they actually get offered to stay upstairs, including the 18th century bed. Um, and our guide told us when they politely declined, they sent them to the Grand Hotel kind of across the street. <laughs> um, I don't blame them, uh, but it was really cool to go up there. There was actually almost nobody up there when we were. Um, and uh, the guide also said that, you know, those apartments are in kind of the, the same diagram or the same architecture as any other apartments, um, except for royal apartments in the palace. So that was kind of cool. 
You should like sleeping here. It's freezing in this palace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, when we got to the royal apartments. We're actually touring um, the royal apartments that are not the current ones. Um, because those are being renovated for a big event. Yeah. Um, but we were touring instead some older ones that are usually not open to the public, which is pretty cool. Um, but we started off and both sides of the, the Royal Apartments um, have uh, essentially guard rooms that are not quite as grandly decorated as the rest of the apartments are. Um, there's one, the Palace Guard, and then one room in is the Royal Guard. And so the closer you get to the Royal Apartments, the fancier the architecture is and the details. But it was interesting that in historical times, they considered those guard rooms to actually be sort of like outdoor spaces. You know, yeah. they weren't, they were kind of part of the courtyard, not considered part of the palace. Yeah. Um, and then as soon as we left the guard room, we got into um, what was essentially the first royal dining room. Um, but it was actually rarely used because the, the building and the palace is, and the interiors are designed in kind of the Italian Romanesque style. Um, but here in Scandinavia, it's actually too cold to warm those size rooms. Um, so instead, they actually had rooms on the inside of the, the palace that were more functional and actually used. So um, like there was no bedroom on the outside of the palace. It's on the inside in a much smaller room. Yeah, and the ceilings were lower, which at first I thought, wow, they're kind of low. That's <laughs> lame, you know, not as pretty, but it's definitely functional. <laughs> yeah, I get it now. Definitely. Um, and then we walked through what was called, I guess, the Victorian room or the Oscarian room because they had King Oscar during the time that it was renovated, um, which was essentially the first like living area or living space once kings and queens started to live together. Um, they always didn't live together because it was an arranged marriage. They didn't necessarily love each other. It was more for you know, diplomatic purposes. Um, but the closer we got into the 18th century, the more they actually loved each other and married for love. Um, and moved in together, so there started to be actual living rooms or living spaces that they, you know, had spent time together. Um, the next room, I think, was like a portrait gallery, which was really cool. Again, it was like another, like, living room. Um, and then I found interesting that the queen actually had a throne in her antechamber, which was kind of neat. Yeah. Um, you don't see that too often. When we first walked in, I thought, oh, this is the, the king's antechamber. No, the throne was for the queen. Um, the king's throne is actually in another part of the building um, where parliament is. Um, and then the room that we're in now was kind of next on the, the list of rooms that we went through. And we learned the further into the royal residence you went, the more important that you were. Um, and so this room was another dining room, um, a little less extravagant than the first one. Um, and this one was actually, I think, used at times by the royal family. Um, and this is in one of the oldest parts of the um, palace. So that was pretty cool. And then there was a last room um, that is the guard room on the other side of the royal residence. So guards on both sides. Overall, I thought it was really good. And the, the tour was also really good. Um, there's one more section of the, the palace that we visited, which is more the functional government side, um, where they have um, the parliament uh, room. And then they have a, a number of, I guess, like antechambers before that, um, which is where the various orders of um, basically nobility or... Um, yeah, I'm not sure what they were called. Yeah. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I'll add a tag to what they're actually called. Um, but essentially, they would have a number of rooms that the closer that you got to the parliament room, the more important that you were, and that's where government things would be decided. Um, but overall, really cool tour. I really enjoyed the palace overall. Um, it's very beautiful inside, although maybe not quite as extravagant as some of the others. It's got its own charm. Yeah, it's a little more functional, I think, than extravagant. So overall, good tour. I think that there's like treasury and maybe some other smaller areas to visit, so we might do that before we head out to the Viking Museum. We uh, took a break from the palace tour to go get some lunch because it was like one o'clock. Um, got a really good lunch. I mean, that place was amazing. What was it called? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Kelly found body a- Body Buddy. Yeah, Body Buddy. <laughs> really healthy lunch. Um, really fantastic. Um, sorry, people walking in front of me. Uh, but then we left lunch and as you can tell, the weather conditions have diminished greatly. Um, it is now snowing pretty hard. Uh, but have no fear, Kelly is happy. She loves the snow. Uh, we're heading to the Viking Museum now, so we'll catch you there. Well, we were uh, pushing the boundaries of the winter wear that we have. Uh, definitely coming down hard, but we made it uh, to the Viking Museum. And the reason we wanted to come here is that it has one of the best or only preserved 
um, ships like it and its kind in the world. Um, it's awesome. Yeah, so really cool to see. It was once owned by Swedish royalty back 11, 1200, um, truly in the days of Vikings. But there's actually a video that we're going to watch here shortly they have that kind of talks about the ship and the preservation and the, the era. Um, and so we're going to watch that and then get some more um, videos about the ship. This was uh, really cool. Um, we spent like what two hours now, yeah. maybe a little more than two hours, just seeing all there is to see in the museum. Um, there's like a 17-minute-long film that we watched that kind of talked about it. Um, but to summarize very quickly, essentially this ship was built in the 1600s, um, and it was supposed to be the greatest in the entire royal fleet. Um, but it never even made it basically out of the, the shipyard. As soon as it was put into water, they were setting it out to sail and it capsized due to a, a slight breeze because the whole thing was misconstructed. Um, so that sunk it to the bottom of the ocean right here in the Stockholm Harbor. Um, it was found like 300 years later yeah. and then raised um, using a number of contractions and like really old scuba gear in 1950s. It is truly impressive how big it is. It is just, I can't even describe how big the, the ship is. Yeah, it, it is really big. And it was one of the first ones ever with two gun decks and then a main deck. Um, and it's just really elaborate and back in the day it was it was painted um, but essentially after it was raised they spent 17 years spraying it with um, some sort of chemical um, and when they sprayed it for 17 years straight that's essentially petrified all of the wood um, however they're still fighting some battles to restore it but it's 98 percent original which is pretty amazing for something built in the 1600s yeah, I think what was really interesting to me too is, you know, unfortunately, obviously there were some casualties on board and just what modern science can do to tell us about life on board and life of the people that were, you know, working on the ship. Um, you know, there were seamen and um, all sorts of different kind of people on board and tons of information about, you know, things derived from their bones and everything else. Yeah. Um, and there was like good exhibits of like life on board um, where you actually got to like crawl in real life dimensions of what the, the gun decks were like, um, which I would have hit my head at every ballast. It's probably like five foot nine, um, five foot eight tall. Um, so a little too short for me to be running around. Um, but it was really cool. Um, I mean, the everything about this was really neat to, to see and it's the only one in the world like it. So why not? Um, but I think we're going to go brave the, the cold a little more. Um, the snow has stopped now, but it's absolutely beautiful outside. Um, so I think I'm going to walk around in the snow a little bit and then probably call it an early night given it's absolutely freezing and everything is wet. <laughs> We uh, quickly visited the Christmas market and found that, yes indeed, the only Christmas market in Stockholm is extremely busy. Um, so with that, I think we're just going to wander a little bit before heading back to the hotel and calling it a night. Uh, but tomorrow's travel day to Florence, so we will probably not vlog another travel day. Um, but we'll see you guys in Italy. For, for now, good night.